Mowgli. The Sun Band of Malcolm Todd. From Chateau Juma. I'm going to read you a story from the book in various locations in the house. The Mailman Milkman Affair. I was walking to the shop across the park to buy bread and milk when I saw a postman and a milkman boxing on the section of grass normally reserved for cricket. They were wearing their traditional uniforms. White jacket and black trousers for the milkman, blue trousers and a red polo shirt for the postman. A small crowd had gathered to watch these two public servants have a good old-fashioned punch-up on a damp municipal park in North Bristol. I didn't care for boxing myself, but like everybody else, I was transfixed by this unusual spectacle. Moreover, it was a good, clean fight, fought with honour and respect for the opponent. And as the crowd grew to 30, people started taking sides. Go on, Posty! Come on, milkman! came the shouts as more and more people joined the crowd. It was only a matter of time before some shifty character in a checked flat cap started taking bets. Most of the initial money seemed to be going on the postie, but I wasn't convinced. While the mailman was certainly the younger and fitter of the two, the dairyman certainly had the weight advantage, and I was sure it was only a time before he delivered the knockout blow. By now there must be well over a hundred people around the ring, with money changing hands faster than the Vegas showdown. The bookmaker wasn't stupid either, and quickly realised that to maximise his takings, he had to prolong the fight for as long as possible. He quickly ran into the ring to split up the fighters, and announced to the excited crowd that there would be a two minute interval. Slightly bewildered, the two fighters went to opposing corners where some people who seemed to have a knowledge of boxing started relaying tactics and splashing water over their faces. I'd never gambled before in my life, but if ever there was a time to take a punt, it was now. I waved a tenor in the air and immediately a small boy forced his way through the crowd. The boy, no more than nine years old, asked who I was for, Posty or Milko, their official fight names. I told him my bet and he quickly scampered back to his master to place it. Someone who had been a boxing referee at some point had volunteered his services and the bookmaker, who was now all round promoter, manager and gang master, was only too happy to oblige him. What was certain on that eventful Monday morning was that no one was leaving. This was high entertainment. The fighters were greeted by a huge roar as they bounded back into the ring, looking revitalised and eager to go. Milko! screamed the fans of the dairyman against the opposing yells of Posty from the mailman's followers. Both fighters were now stripped down to their trousers and the whole scene felt like an epic battle between two mythical heroes fighting to their death. Why they were fighting in the first place, no one had bothered to find out. Whatever it was, it didn't really matter. They were fighting for their own pride, plus the hearts and mind of a few hundred people who had gathered in the park that morning. The initial encounters were fairly tame, with neither fighter taking any unnecessary risks. This didn't please the hyped up crowd and a few boos echoed around the arena. The fighters seemed to take their cue and their blows seemed to rain in from either side as both men wanted to plead the Bayan mob. And then bang, Posty's guard went down, allowing Milko to slam a perfectly weighted left hook into the opponent's face, flooring him, blood spurting out from a deep cut under his eye. The referee started counting, one, a two, three, triggering a riotous roar from Posty's supporters. Four, Five, six, Posty was hardly moving. Seven, eight, the roar became louder and slowly Posty began to get to his feet. Nine, Posty stood on one leg and then, after what seemed like an age, 
finally got up, standing tall and ready to fight. A giant roar went up from everybody. Nobody wanted to see this finished. When the battle recommenced, each man gave it his all, the punches flying in from all sides as each fighter pushed for the final victory. The noise level increased as the supporters demanded a knockout, especially as everybody knew that it wouldn't be long before the police moved in and started making arrests. After about another five minutes of frenetic action, the fighters started to tire. Their work rate dropped, and they seemed to be content to lock arms and hug each other, occasionally delivering the odd punch to prove they were still interested. So when they collapsed to the ground, still embraced like two lovers in a tragedy, a huge roar erupted over the park. And then, just as quickly as it had started, the crowd drifted away, leaving the two fighters, the referee and the bookmaker, standing in the ring. At first I could not understand why nobody had asked for their money back. It was clearly a draw. It was only when I say the bookmaker take the roll of money from his pocket and stuff it in between the bloody fighters that I understood. And then, like everybody else, I walked away, leaving the postman and the milkman lying on the ground, the best of friends. Two men who had given several hundred people on a park in North Bristol a marvellous morning's entertainment. Sous sage de la